Yo, what up? It's the tip of the week, and today we're going to discuss how to manage a patient that's on blood thinners. If you love this tip and want to go deeper, check out this course. I can describe this course in one simple phrase. Surgical coaching in your office. Contrary Surgical Coaching is a PACE accredited with the Academy of General Dentistry. This course offers an innovative approach to surgical and implant dentistry that can help you achieve your goals. Contrary Surgical Coaching gives you affordable prices, hands-on training, how to handle complications, step-by-step -step methods for best results, and how to discuss patient finances and your return on investment. Gain the skills you can use now on your patients for tomorrow that could achieve your production clinical goals while never booking a flight for education again. Start earning CE today. Enroll at jaredwdds.com. All right, number one is this. Ask your patient, why are they taking a blood thinner? You know, most patients when they come in, they really don't know exactly what medications they're on. Now you will have a few, but most patients really don't know what medications are on. And so when you ask them what type of blood thinner that you're taking or what type of medication are you taking and why you're taking it, it will give you so much information. For instance, if a patient says to you, hey, I'm on aspirin and they check that off as a blood thinner. And before you get that information, you're racking your brain like, man, I got to do a consult now. I'm not going to be able to do this procedure. Like, how is this patient going to respond? Blah, 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 blah. What it's going to do, it's going to throw you all the way off. And so by just getting your inspector cap on and chotting down why they're taking these medications, it'll alert you on what you need to do moving forward so that you have a patient that has a wonderful experience in your hands. Number two is this. Figure out what medication it is. Is it aspirin? Is it Coumadin? Is it Warfarin? Is it Xarelto? Like what kind of medication it is? Each one of those medications have their own little way of being managed. So keep that in mind. Case in point, I had a patient come in the other day. I'm going to be taking out a few thirds of them. The patient had multiple heart valves replaced. They had knee joints replaced. They got a lot of stuff going on. And when I'm speaking to the doctor, I'm speaking to the cardiologist and I'm asking him, hey, should we hold the patient off their Coumadin? And the doctor is like, I really prefer you not to because if we do, we're going to have to do a Lovenox bridge. And if you know anything about Lovenox, that means you got to get shots. And those shots aren't fun. And so I'm always thinking about, okay, how can I make the procedure that I'm going to provide from as least amount as trauma as possible. Now, if there's going to be trauma, hey, we're going to do that. But I want to make sure that I'm doing the due diligence necessary because if that were my mom, my dad that was sitting or in there in somebody's chair, like one of you all, I'd hope that you all would do the same due diligence like I would in this particular situation. And so what happened was after speaking to the doctor, we basically came together and say the pros did not outweigh the cons of taking the patient off of Coumadin. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna let the patient know, hey, it's gonna take some time, you're gonna be in the office, and we're gonna take this thing slow because I wanna make sure that you're covered regardless. And so if we have to break the procedure up, so I just do one tooth at a time and manage it, then that's what I'll do. If we could do both, then that's what we'll do. And it's all about communicating with the patient, with your staff, with the physicians, because generally there are multiple physicians that are involved in these medications, so that everybody's really on the same page, so that when you apply the care that you are about to give, you will have a wonderful result. And number three, which I already included in there, was get a consult. You know, I'm not opposed to calling a physician and say, hey, doctor such and such, what do you think about this patient? We share common patients. How would you want to go about managing them? And most of them get you on the phone. You don't have to wait on the phone hours and hours or um, be placed on hold. Ask one of your team members to say, hey, um, what should we do with Dr. X? Uh, what, what should we do with patient X? We share the same patient. Well, how do you want to manage this? And most of them will give you that information. Just make sure you document the time, who you spoke to, and what the situation is about. And then just for 
make sure everybody's on the same page, send a medical consult that's written so that you can put that in the patient's chart. So in the event adverse situations come about, you'll be prepared. So there you have it guys. I'm Dr. Jared Williams and my focus is for you to remember to smile after surgery. Make it a great one.